You have Gavin, Tony Thurman, Rob Bont, and the Attorney General, Scott Weiner, who's leading the charge, which we all know because we see he's actually changed his tactics since we, he lost with SB 866. And we took down so many bad, you know, together, those bad CB19 COVID bills. He's changed his strategy to now be a principal co-author instead of the lead co-author yeah. um, mm -hmm. or the lead author, excuse me, because anytime we would see an SB bill come out and then see his name, we would attack. So right. he is orchestrating. It's very intentional. Yeah. You can see that he shifted his tactics. My point is, is when you see the strategy, you see the, the bad the bad pill that, that they're giving um, Prop 47, how do you, when you win, and you're in office, like, how are you going to navigate? I mean, truly, this is unconstitutional and corrupt criminal yes. activity. You know, I, and I just want to add, you see Assembly Member Bill Asaley, for example, who's mm -hmm. been super vocal and mm -hmm. they stripped him of his titles, removed him from committees, removed his funding. Like, nice. what are you going to do to be effective when you win? Well, you know, I think it. So to your point about. Scott Weiner kind of authoring many of the mm -hmm. of the horrific bills. Now he is spreading that out to his other um, LGBTQ caucus, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> you have Lori Wilson who's bringing forward quite a few as well, and you know many of them. So people are people are not on board with this. We have a chance to make change. We voted them, these individuals, in the first time, and we see that they're not representing we the people. We need more representatives, more people running who represent we the people as a whole. And then once in, it's building those um, bridges, building coalitions, working with people who are sensible. You know, I think there are, we have a Democrat supermajority, but I think there are many of them who are not okay with mm -hmm. some of the legislation that Weiner and his caucus are pushing through. So, you know, I, I, um, Senator Eggman was on the Senate floor a few weeks ago regarding SB 1414. And oh my gosh, I was like, thank you. Thank you for supporting Senator Shannon Gross, SB 1414, because no, we sh selling children on for sex should be a felony. Mm -hmm. Senator Grove got them for, um, I'm sorry, I mean, let me take that back, back. buying children for right. sex right. should be a felony. She was able to get through SB 14 last year, which made selling children for sex a felony. I was in that Senate hearing, right. um, public safety Senate hearing with mm -hmm. Wahab, Skinner, and, and Wiener. And you, I heard the testimony of these young ladies who were in trafficking rings who couldn't get out. One of, their, one of the girl's sisters died. It was horrific and gut-wrenching. And now you have... Wiener, Skinner, and Wahab, and many others saying, no, it's okay. We can, 16 and 17 year olds should be able to sell themselves for sex because we have, you know, for instance, we have a, a large um, foster care population here in this state and they need to be able to make a living. Right. No, it, it's exactly what you talked about. Are you kidding me? Those are exactly. our vulnerable. Yeah. Our most vulnerable children who don't have parents to protect them, to speak up to them, for them, to defend them. They have to resort to selling themselves for sex on the street. That's well, a mess. It's, That's it's exactly, I know, and it's exactly what you talked about. It's like, instead of addressing the underlying issue, we're going to put, we're going to triage it and just put a Band-Aid on it. And when they do that, instead of addressing why there are so many foster care children, mm. because of the attack on the nuclear family, or because the cost of living, or because we, you know, the sexual revolution, or whatever, is because of the attack on the African American community, instead of addressing those, we're going to put a Band-Aid, and that Band-Aid actually makes it worse. 